Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Uh, friends, it's been a long time since I made a HIV video, uh, and um, uh, there has been some uh, demand for uh, the MIT uh, uh, two vaccine approach. So I decided to read up on it, and there is uh, quite a bit to understand before I can make a video. But in order to give you immediate um, satisfaction that you have some information with you. Uh, what I have done is I have collated uh, initial information and used AI to generate a dialogue, a kind of conversation which can give you an idea of what it's all about. But I promise that I'll be back with a proper video which I'll personally read off to you uh, because there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. So there is uh, this Professor uh, Daryl Irvine um, uh, in MIT who's been leading a team and uh, they have come up with a different vaccine approach. It is a, a nanoparticle of uh, HIV and uh, some component from a, a tree uh, which they have fused together and used that as a vaccine stimulant or a vaccine for the lack of a better term. Uh, I'm, that's the reason why I want to read this thoroughly to understand so that I give you the exact terminology. But this particular compound or molecule or whatever you may call it uh, was given in a smaller dose first and then in a bigger dose and then that elicited a really good response. And uh, right now they are in clinical trial. Uh, so I want to get you more information about that. But while you wait for me to finish my reading, uh, here is the dialogue generated by AI uh, based on the inputs that I gave it about this particular approach. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me have your comments in the end and I'll be back to you with a proper video on the MIT approach. So, you know, we're always talking about the challenges of HIV vaccine development. Right. And yeah. there's some uh, really promising news here. Oh, it's a like little... a recent study yeah. from MIT. Yep. They might have cracked the code. Wow. Cracked the code. How so? Well, with this like revolutionary two dose approach, you know, with a two dose approach for HIV. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting because, I mean, one of the biggest hurdles with HIV is it always been his mutation rate, right? Exactly. It's like it's a it's like trying to hit a moving target. Yes, a moving target. That's a great way to put it. And this research, what's fascinating is it seems like they found a way to kind of anticipate where the target's going. OK, so how how they even begin to like get a handle on that? Well, they actually started with a computer model, hmm. which is becoming increasingly popular in research these days. Oh, yeah, for sure. Using algorithms mm -hmm. to basically simulate how different vaccine doses and uh, different timings would affect the immune response. So it's like having a virtual lab to play around in. A virtual laboratory where they can test out all these different scenarios without having to, you know, actually stick needles in people. Right, right. But I mean, simulations can only take you so far. Of course, of course. So they uh, did they actually test this out in a real world setting? They did. They did. They took those insights from their model and they tested them using mice. Okay. And that's where things get really interesting. All right. Now you've got me like on the edge of my seat here. Okay. Give me the details. What did they do with these mice? So they were working with an HIV envelope protein. Okay. It's like a tiny little piece of the virus okay. that our immune system can learn to recognize, right? Okay. And what they found was that by giving a very, very small initial dose of this protein, they could essentially prime the immune system. Prime the immune system. Yeah, it's like, you know. Like giving them a little heads up. Exactly. Like showing them a wanted poster, but the picture's kind of blurry. Okay, okay, I get it. It's like, hey, be on the lookout for something like this, you know? Right, right, but not the full picture yet. Exactly, exactly. Uh, now, here's the kicker. They waited a week. Okay. And then they hit the immune system with a second dose. Uh-huh. Much, much larger dose of the envelope protein. Oh, wow. And this time, it's like showing the immune system a crystal clear, high-definition image. Oh, so the immune system's already kind of prepped yeah. and it's ready to, like, react much more aggressively. Exactly. And that's exactly what they saw. They saw a 60-fold increase in antibody levels in the mice who got that two-dose regimen compared to those who just got the single dose. Wait, a 60-fold 60, 60 increase? 60-fold. That's, that's incredible. It's huge. That's huge. I mean, what's actually happening at, like, a cellular level to create that kind of response? So it all comes down to these cells in our immune system called B cells. Okay. And these are the guys that are responsible for producing antibodies. Okay. 
Now, when you introduce that initial smaller dose, yeah. it activates a small number of these B cells. So it's like a small team, but they're like highly trained. Exactly. They're like, you know, the special forces in the immune system, they're prepped and ready to go. And then when that second larger dose arrives, yeah. these prepped B cells, yeah. they recognize it immediately. Okay. And they go into overdrive. Mm -hmm. They rush the antigen, that piece of the virus, to the lymph nodes. The lymph nodes. Which are like the battlefields of the immune system, okay. right? That's where the real fight goes down. So it's not just like more antibodies. It's not just about quantity. It's that they're like. It's about quality. Trained and they're ready for this targeted attack. Absolutely. Yeah. And and here's where it gets even more interesting. Yeah. They found that this two dose method. Yeah. It actually keeps that antigen in those lymph nodes for a longer period of time compared to the single dose approach. Oh, interesting. So it's like so giving those B cells more time to study the enemy. You know? Check sack. More time to study the enemy, develop better strategy. Wow, it's fascinating. Isn't it? It's like we're we're tricking the immune system in a way. In a way, yeah. Well, we're, we're working with it, though. We're working with it. We're not we... just, you know, hitting it over the head with a blunt object. Right, right. We're being more strategic. Exactly. We're being smarter about it. Right. And this prolonged exposure, it allows more B cells to interact with the antigen, diversify their response. And so that creates... A much broader and ultimately more effective antibody army. That's incredible. It's really quite remarkable. So this is all starting to sound extremely promising, but I imagine there are still challenges, right? Like, what were some of the limitations of this study? Right. Well, for one, this was in mice, right? Right. And while mice are great, their immune systems aren't exactly the same as ours. Of course. Of yeah. course. So, I mean, how do we know if this will actually work in humans? So, I mean, it makes sense that it might not translate perfectly. Yeah, there's always that possibility. So what are the, like... What are the next steps for this research? Well, they're not wasting any time, that's for sure. Okay. They're already conducting trials in primates. Oh, wow. So yeah. that's that's getting a lot closer to humans. Much closer, yeah. Their immune systems are even more similar to ours. Okay, so that'll be like a major indicator. Of yeah, a major indicator. Who has potential. Oh, absolutely. So I'm curious, do you think this two-dose strategy could, like, could it be a game changer for other diseases too? Oh, absolutely. I mean... This research was focused on HIV, right? right? But this idea, this principle of priming the immune system, yeah. it could potentially be applied to, I mean, so many other diseases. Really? Yeah. Think about the ones that have been really difficult to vaccinate against. Like what What are we talking about here? Like malaria. Oh, wow. Tuberculosis. Yeah. Even certain types of cancers. Cancers, too. Yeah. These are all areas where traditional vaccines, they haven't really been as effective as we'd like. Right. But this two-dose strategy yeah. with that focus on yeah. really yeah. activating, training the immune system, right. it yeah. could open up, I mean, a whole new world. It's like, it's amazing to me how, like, one breakthrough can just, like, yeah. have these ripple effects. Absolutely. Across, like, so many different fields. It's true. And I don't know, what I think is really cool about this yeah. is how elegant this approach is, you know? It is. It it's is. not about, like, brute forcing the immune system. It's yeah. like we're... It's about working smarter, not harder. Yeah. Okay. It's like we're working with its natural processes to right, make it, like, more precise and more effective. Exactly. And so just like, like... It's not a hammer. Yeah. It's more like a scalpel. Yes. That's a great way to put it. Right. It's like we're finally, like starting to understand yes. the language the immune system speaks. Yes, and we're learning how to, you know, yeah. speak back to it a little bit. Yeah, instead of just, like, right. you know, shouting at it. Exactly. It's not just about do this, do that. Right. It's about understanding the conversation that's already happening. Right. And then figuring out how to kind of nudge it in the right direction. Yeah, and it seems like that's, like, a, a bigger trend. It is a bigger trend. In immunology, these are. Absolutely, yeah. This move away from brute force and towards finesse. Yeah, like towards subtlety. Being, being more sophisticated. Yeah, exactly. Becoming more sophisticated in our approaches. So it's not just about, yeah. you know, this one vaccine. It's not just about the one vaccine. It's, it's about, like, this deeper. It's about the bigger picture. Yeah, understanding of how our right. bodies actually work. It's about understanding the fundamental principles of how our bodies fight disease. Right. And then, like, using that knowledge yes. to come up and with... And then harnessing that knowledge. 
better treatments. To develop smarter, more effective interventions. And I mean, that's what often leads to the biggest breakthroughs, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's that fundamental understanding that really drives progress. It's like, you know, we've been we've been talking a lot about the science here. We have. But I think it's important to like take a step back for yeah. a second and yeah. and think about the potential impact. The potential impact, right? Of this research, you know? Absolutely. We're talking about a disease, yeah. HIV, HIV, that has like affected billions, like, millions of people. Billions and millions of people worldwide. Worldwide and, you know, it's a global pandemic. A vaccine, especially mm. one that's like Especially easy to administer, easy to administer, effective, effective. I mean, that could be game changer, a game changer. Absolutely a game changer. It's a fight against this. Huge implications. Huge global pandemic. Couldn't agree more. And it's not just about HIV either. Right. right? I mean, think about the ripple effects this could have on global health overall. Right. If we can apply this two dose strategy to other challenging diseases. Right. The possibilities are, I mean, really extraordinary. And that's what like. I don't know. That's what makes following this stuff so exciting. It is exciting. You know, it's not just about the like the little advancements here and there. Oh. It's like mm. those moments where we like stumble upon something yeah. truly groundbreaking. Yeah, those aha moments. That has the potential to like paradigm shift for the world. dog. Exactly. Paradigm shifting discoveries. As we know it. That have the potential to, you know, rewrite the textbooks. Yeah. And change the way we approach you know, not just HIV, right. but all sorts of diseases. Yeah. It's an exciting time to be involved in this field. It really is. That's for sure. It really is. It's like it's like we're standing on the edge of like yeah. a whole new era. It really is. In medicine, you know. It's an incredibly exciting time to be involved in this field, that's for sure. Yeah. You know, one of the things yeah. that I thought was really interesting yeah. about this MIT study uh -huh. was yeah. how they used yeah. the computational modeling right. to give them like... A head start. Yeah, it's like... It's like having a road map, you know? Yeah, yeah, instead of just... Versus wandering through the wilderness. Yeah, like stumbling around in the dark. Exactly, exactly. And and that kind of computational modeling, I mean, that's... Oh, it's not just limited to... Not just for vaccines. Vaccines, no, no, no. It's being applied to yeah. all sorts of things. Yeah. Drug discovery. Yeah. Personalized medicine. It's incredible. Oh, it's, it's becoming an increasingly powerful tool yeah. in our arsenal. For sure. It's really remarkable how they were able to, like, blend. It, what's really cool is how they blended it. Yeah, yeah. They blended that computational yes, with yes. the experimental. Yeah, yeah. So they used the model mm -hmm. to generate hypotheses. Right. Tested them in the lab. Yeah. And then used those results to actually refine the model. So they're... Like it's a beautiful, improving you know, exactly. example beautiful, beautiful. of how these two approaches can work together yeah. synergistically. It's like this amazing. Or drive scientific progress. Feedback loop, you know. It is. It's a beautiful feedback loop. Yeah, it's like we've got this this ability now to like, you know, it's like not just observe the natural world, but I mean, to my, like manipulate it. Manipulate it, replicate it. Yeah. yeah, in ways that like we could only dream of. It's true. A few decades ago. It really speaks to yeah. the power of human ingenuity, doesn't it? It really does. The you ability to, you know, yeah. take these complex systems, yeah. understand them, and then actually, you yeah. know, use that understanding to our advantage. It's incredible. It's amazing. And it, it also, like, to me, it highlights yeah. the importance of, like, Collaboration. Collaboration, yeah. Across different fields. Absolutely. I mean, you've got computer scientists, yeah. immunologists, virologists. All coming together to tackle these challenges. Yeah. And it's I mean, and it's at that intersection, right? Yeah. Where the real magic happens. That's where the breakthroughs happen, yeah. Exactly. And it's a good reminder that, like, you know. Sometimes. The biggest discoveries. The biggest breakthroughs yeah. come from the most. The most unexpected places. Unexpected places, yeah. So for anybody out there you listening. Who's like? If you're fascinated by fascinated by the human body and the human body and and how it all works, the endless possibilities of science. Keep keep exploring. Keep exploring. Keep asking questions. Keep asking those questions because because you never know. You never know well, what yeah. you might discover. Right around the corner, you know. Exactly, exactly. Every groundbreaking discovery. Yeah starts with a single question, a spark of curiosity. That's right. So keep those minds engaged. Yeah. Man, who knows? Maybe you'll be the one to unravel the next big, the next big thing. Scientific mystery, right? <laughs> well, that's a wrap for this deep dive into the yeah. exciting world of HIV vaccine research. It's been a pleasure. We hope you've enjoyed. <laughs>
this journey into the immune system. Absolutely. It's fascinating stuff. And all the amazing work. Is being done. Cutting edge stuff. To, to tackle this like really challenging disease. Absolutely. <laughs> One of humanity's most challenging adversaries for sure. Until next time. Until next time. Happy exploring. Keep exploring, everyone. Well, friends, I hope you uh, got quite a bit to mull over based on the conversation that you heard. Uh, and uh, wait for my video. Uh, I'll get it out to you as soon as possible. And also, I'm uh, working with a bunch of academic professors who are actually doing research work uh, and um, on HIV. And I'll have some of them on, uh, on the channel uh, shortly. Uh, so uh, please wait for that as well. So now we are going more for quality and instead of trying to expect two videos every week, which was kind of becoming nerve wracking for me because there's only so much one can do. And there's only so much of information, fresh information available. After a point, it becomes a repetition of all the old things. So uh, I think we should take it a bit easy. Uh, the cure will come for sure. Uh, we are getting closer. And um, I'll be back to you with uh, another video. Please do not hesitate to comment and also uh, press the like. It helps the channel. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.